Filip Rozinski. Uh, I'm happy to meet you in front of my cameras. Thank you very much for finding your time. Thank you, Peter, for inviting me. I look forward to our conversation. Uh, when I took your book to my hands, uh, my first impression was, wow, this is the man who solved one of the biggest questions of the temporary world, how we can understand each other across the cultures. Do you feel yourself like this person, like the man who solved this problem? Well, that's very kind of you to, to say something like that. I, I wouldn't have that pretension, but there is a, a big ambition, I have to say, with coaching across cultures. And the ambition is indeed to help people uh, make the most of their differences. Today, one of the issues I find is that you have a lot of conflict, a lot of misunderstanding That's that it. are associated exactly. with cultural differences. That's it. The good news is that cultural differences, in the broader sense, could be a richness. But it's not enough to just say that cultural differences are a richness. You need to do something to deploy the richness in that diversity. And coaching across cultures is precisely about helping to do that in a very pragmatic fashion. So, mm -hmm. so I think it does have potential. Um, it could be useful in society today, it is. But there is a lot more that could be done. It's still not so well known, I and have to say. You know, I'm sure that already now, this is very good and very important news for everybody. Well, there is some way how we all can understand each other. Wow, that's great. And what is it built on? It's built on that there are some things that we all people have in common. It's, um, if you ask about the, the theory, really what I've done um, here is um, build upon the work of many interculturalists, uh, Klukon, Strott, Bert, Hofstede, Edward Hall, many people who have described cultural differences. Um, and what they've noticed is there are cultural differences, but they focused primarily on national differences. And mm -hmm. part of that work that has been done by many interculturalists was I would say I'm simplifying a little bit, but it was to compare nationalities, saying the French are like this, the Americans are like that, uh, the Brits are li like this. And, um, and for me, what I've done is build upon that work, but more to have a vocabulary to describe cultural differences in a broader fashion. So to say um, some people tend to communicate, let's say, more directly, some people more indirectly, I'm less interested in saying that all the French are like that, all the Americans are like that, but I want to use a vocabulary just to describe our reality mm -hmm. and to convey the sense that all these cultural differences are in us, potentially available to us. So if I've been brought up to prefer a form of direct communication, for example, I still have the possibility to communicate indirectly as well, and I can learn that from people from different cultures. But right. My invitation didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. But no, my no, invitation is really to say we, we all have some biases, but we all also have an opportunity to learn from others and enrich our own cultures by learning from others. So it's all in us, but it's a matter of, of, a, of unfolding, if you'd like, the cultural potential that resides in all of us. And when we do that, not only do we broaden our cultural repertoire, we have more options available, different mm -hmm. ways of thinking, mm -hmm. different ways of communicating, different of man ways of managing time, of organizing ourselves, but we also have an opportunity that, so therefore to reach out to other people, to understand them, to communicate with them, to work with them. That's the idea. So this is about to widen my personal soft skills in uh, communication, it's understanding and patience? It's, yeah, well, it's, yes, well, it's, it's to widen my view of the world. I have a certain view of the world. We've all been brought up with certain set of behavior, certain norms, certain values, and, and this is great. But what we find is uh, that when we are in a different context, those norms, those values that may work for us become mm -hmm. limiting. And the ambition of coaching across cultures is to invite us to reflect upon ourselves, what are our values, our norms, our assumptions? Is that working for us? Is that working for people around us? Mm -hmm. If so, we shouldn't change anything. But if we find that this may not be working for us so well, um, or there may be other ways for us to be even more effective, then we have an opportunity to go beyond our current cultural limitations to mm -hmm. broaden our repertoire. If I may compare this to a tennis player, mm -hmm. you know, 
Um, I may be a tennis player like Bjorn Borg when I was yep. in school. He was a, a baseline tennis yes, player. He yes. was great. I remember him. And, yes. and he would win um, Roland Garros several times. He won six times, if yep, I remember yep. correctly. But he also learned to go to the net. That was not his preference, but he learned to do that as well. So he was able to win at Wimbledon as well. So he basically broadened his repertoire. He had more options available to him that allowed him to be an exceptional tennis player. Yes. What I'm saying here is um, oftentimes I notice people have a narrow or static view of their identity. I'm like this, I'm not like uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. And um, Excuse me, I will never do the things like that. I'm sorry, I'm the straight man. I Every exactly. time I say the thing straight. Yeah. Don't try to push me and change my personality. That, this is what you have on your mind. That, so, yes, indeed. And Yes, indeed. And, and that's unfortunate that people w would have such a static view of themselves without the contemplating the possibility that maybe they can broaden their repertoire. They are not just that direct communication person or that mm -hmm. hierarchical person or whatever the case may be. And the way I would engage with this person is not to say this is bad. You know? mm -hmm. I wouldn't judge a person or criticize the person, but I would invite the person to be even more himself or herself by embracing other possibilities. So this is about to find in my personality these different kinds of communication, understanding, um, yes. maybe showing myself and these things. I remember in Mongolia, uh -huh. uh, we have been uh, crossing Gobi in a car and having some troubles with a, the with a machine. Yeah. Uh, we found a girl, just uh -huh. entering the girl, and yes. a Mongolian driver with us, he, he told us, don't be in a hurry, take <laughs> time. Yes. <laughs> we entered the girl. Uh -huh. The man sitting inside just only looked at us, said something in Mongolian language, and the lady took just the cups and started to prepare the tea. Uh -huh. Our driver said only, good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and we spent two hours sitting, drinking tea, just sharing the time, uh -huh. and uh -huh. we have been waiting till the man from the girl would say, may I help you somehow? Uh -huh. And all the Mongolian people, they knew, and we have been still waiting. What, what's up? Why are we waiting? We should go, you know. <laughs> and I think this is a situation where you can just be there and help. And, but it sounds that in this situation you were open enough to, to try something different. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe if I understand correctly, you would have been, um, your desire would have been to just rush and, and, and go forward. And here you accepted to just slow down for a moment. Um, and maybe did you learn something from that experience? What a did lot. you learn from that? A lot. What did you learn from that experience? I learned that uh, if I feel that I'm in a hurry, it doesn't mean that I'm objectively in a hurry. No. Uh -huh. yes. The world has its tempo, uh -huh. and uh, the better is listen to its tempo yes. than to try to push the world to change. No way. No uh -huh. way. Yes. And it's it's great, uh, great memory until now. Well, I mean, thank you for mentioning this example because one of the aspects we, we talk about in coaching across cultures is uh, time. For example, we compare mm -hmm. time, uh, a certain notion of time that would be scarce versus a plentiful notion of time. And oftentimes people have the sense, like you just described, that time is scarce. There is never enough time to do all the things we need to do. Therefore, we need to rush. When we rush, what happens is when we learn how to rush, we learn to be very productive, to do a lot of things in a short amount of time. But the, the problem with that is sometimes we become so productive that we end up doing a lot of things and we end up being overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And so what we propose here is that in other cultures, like Mongolia, as you, you described, um, people have a view that time could be plentiful. If I mm -hmm. believe that time is plentiful, then I can slow down, I can relax, I can take the time, and the paradox as I often say in, in seminars, is when we slow down, that's when we can better appreciate the scarcity of time. It's when we slow down, when we view time as if it were plentiful, that we can better appreciate the scarcity mm -hmm. of time. By viewing time in a plentiful fashion, then we can discern what is truly important and we can learn to be effective, that is mm -hmm. to focus on what is right, as opposed to just being efficient, that, is, that means doing things right. So. What I'm proposing also here is that it doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, mm -hmm. By, you know, we play on the paradoxes. By slowing down, um, then we can discern what is truly important and we can appreciate scarcity better.
Wow. And it, in a practical way, we can learn to be both effective and efficient. So we are so productive, but we pay attention to where we spend our time. And um, we make sure that we spend our time and our life on what truly matters. And that we end up also making sure we take the time to drink that uh, cup of was it uh, tea, tea or you, coffee the, the or, the uh, and just relax and enjoy the relationship as opposed to always rushing. So this example you gave is just an illustration of uh, what, when, what we can learn from different cultures, but that assumes that you have that openness, um, the desire to learn from other cultures. And, um, that is and that's what we try to also propose, to invite people to have that openness. That is very important that I'm traveling around 25 years around all the world, but yeah. doing films. So mm -hmm. my job is to try to understand them. Uh -huh. to try to understand their time, uh, yeah. their uh, values. But when a businessman is on his way, for yes. example, he knows, well, I have four days. Yes. After four days, I must be back. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time. And uh, my boss, he will ask me. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult then to yeah. find the, the patience. The and yes, yes, it's very difficult. And so a lot of people end up just rushing, doing a lot of things but not necessarily doing the things that matter. So that, I would uh -huh. say mm -hmm. even for the, I mean, it's even more important for these big executive CEOs who are very busy. And I work with a lot of these um, people who don't have much time. It's even more critical, I would say, to be very mindful of how they are using their, their time. To so make sure they use their time effectively. And also to make sure that they take time for themselves to recover, to um, recuperate, so they don't end up just burning out, um, yeah, either themselves or people around them. Recuperate, this is the great word for that. That's good, yes. that's very good. That's another cultural difference yeah. we talk about stability versus change. Some people are always into a changing mode yes. and may not appreciate the need for some stability, stability being the time to recuperate, the time to consolidate. If you only change all the time, you risk building castle in the sand, uh, mm -hmm. something that is not going to last. So here's again a paradox. If we want to change and be successful in change, we also need some stability. And what this means is, in fact, um, we are promoting a form of uh, a certain vision that is inclusive. So we are not saying those who prefer stability are bad guys. You know, those that's are the ones resistant you know, to change. And I may alienate exactly them. If I say way. that I'm going to alienate them, I say, you love stability, that's great. We need stability as well. So we appreciate your qualities. How can we combine this with change so we have the best of both worlds together? We can learn from each other mm -hmm. and we can promote uh, a form of unity and diversity where, um, yeah, it's not just about change yeah. or about stability, but it's a combination of both. You know, I'm impressed how complex is your style of coaching. Because it's not only about, well, just learn some skills and some uh, local habits and go on. It's, it starts in, 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 in inner space yes. to find my balance, to find my real mission. Then yes. understand why I'm going there. And then understand why these people are the best one to meet and to cooperate and to find the way. Yeah. Start to value these people. This is a long journey, long inner journey yes. to be so balanced, so... So balanced, that's it. It is, well, I mean, thank you for saying that. It is, a, it is a, a lifelong journey, and in fact, the form of coaching that I'm promoting, I call it global coaching. It's, um, it's a coaching that calls upon multiple perspectives. And you mentioned some of these, you know, without mm -hmm. maybe um, realizing this, but reflecting of what is your purpose, what is truly important to you, I would call this the, I would mention this as the spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's very mm -hmm. important indeed to, if we want to have a life that is purposeful, that is fulfilling for us, and that is inspiring for others, it's important, interesting at least, to be aware of what is our purpose, what is important to us. That's only one of the perspectives, but to be an executive today, to be a professional today, to be a human being today, um, there are different challenges, complex challenges that we face. And so in global coaching, we are looking specifically at six perspectives mm -hmm. to help people develop and grow. And these perspectives range from the physical all the way to the spiritual, if I may explain this just in a moment. The physical perspective is just a realization that 
you know, being in good shape, in good health um, is really a blessing. Um, mm -hmm. And we cannot take that for granted, particularly if we want to work um, and have a lasting contribution, taking care of our health in a proactive fashion through nutrition, through physical activity, through sleep as well. Yes. Uh, it's yes. important. So, and that's very much a part of the coaching approach that I call global coaching. All the way, so the physical, all the way to the spiritual, looking at our purpose. We are also looking at psychology. Psychology, there are different areas within psychology, but it's about understanding yourself. Mm -hmm. It's about understanding your motives. It's sometimes it's about very difficult to face yes, ourselves. Well, facing ourselves, building a healthy ego, being mm -hmm. you know, well, confident without yeah. being Not arrogant. Not ego, but be able to watch it from another point of view. That's as well, so something. that involves self-awareness, awareness also of the fact that we may have certain preferences, others have different preferences, mm -hmm. how do we appreciate those differences, which are not necessarily cultural, but differences that we can be born with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how do we appreciate also our unconscious motives, um, mm -hmm. sometimes we don't even realize that uh, we have these unconscious motives, or that other people have these motives and we may be surprised by some irrational, apparently irrational behaviors. If we have some awareness about what may be driving some behaviors, we have some more clues to deal with those situations. So mm -hmm. psychology, there is a lot that we can learn that can be very helpful. I would say most, most of all to build constructive relationship with other people, healthy constructive relationship with other people. When in fact, if you see organizations today, the world today, you see a lot of negative uh, games that people play mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. a negative use of energy. So uh, psychology is useful. Culture, we have already mentioned it. Yes. yes. The political perspective is also mm -hmm. one that um, I like to consider because in organizations um, that is, I would argue, part of life as well. And the reason for this is whether we recognize this or not, we all have our motives. And to achieve our goals, um, we typically need others. And others, they have their goals as well. So we depend on others, they depend on us. How are we able to ensure that our agenda is taken into account? Well, we may be very good at what we do, but to be able to push our agenda, we typically mm -hmm. need others. And we need to build alliances, for example. It's okay. Sometimes people see that in, as a negative activity, but in the book, I, I explain about how we can do this in a constructive fashion. So I'm, I'm building my own power, but I'm doing that in a way that also serves others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in fact, I may realize that by serving others, people around me and society at, at large, I may find even more meaning in my life. So um, everybody wins when we do that. So really this uh, coaching, at some level, coaching is very simple. It involves just being there, listening, well. asking some questions. But here, we, if we talk about the global coaching, we go a, a little bit deeper. We look at the person, at the human being, as a you know, complex person, um, as an integrated person, and we help that person address uh, complex challenges by looking at their reality yes. from multiple angles, multiple perspectives. Uh, I remember uh, with my small daughter, I have been in a desert, uh -huh. meeting the people living in the desert and she started to laugh at them. She said, well, look at them, how crazy clothing <laughs> do they have? I, 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 why are they doing this crazy <laughs> stuff? I said, well, uh, listen, if they are living here for centuries, then finally there is a reason why to wear this kind of clothing. Uh -huh. Maybe we are funny persons, we are the clothes, not them. Excellent. And she started to think about it. And after a few minutes when she was silent, she said, uh, Papa, can I try to wear this? Yeah, I, I was happy. I said, well, good, come on, let's so find it. a great coach. And she, she did, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> a great coach in the sense, <laughs> Thank yes, you very much. In, in the sense, <laughs> I think that you are inviting your daughter to look at them. What can I learn from these people? You know, mm -hmm. instead of judging them and laughing, you know, because, it's okay, well, but... it is funny. Uh, 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 and it's okay to have fun. from Central European eyes. The then and, and it's okay to laugh. Yes. I, I, I think her laughter was very... Kind and genuine, there was no mockery in there. That's right. That's so right. we can laugh because it's some, it was something just different. Laughing. Laugh and That's laugh right. As well That's like right. That. But I think what you also did with her was to say, okay, these people, um, what can I learn from, from these people? And in fact, she wanted to try their clothes. So I think that would suggest that 
you evoked uh, her curiosity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think that's what we need more in the world. Um, people who would invite um, their children to look at others in this fashion so mm -hmm. their children would be willing to learn from these other people. Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, I think that in the temporary world, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, multidisciplinary cooperation yeah. is growing. And your way of coaching, this is some special kind of anthropology, ethnography, uh, kind of psychology, kind of personal psychology. And of course, it's a business. So yes. uh, I don't believe to changes in the world that are motivated uh, in uh, different powers than is ego and money. I think these two are, and, and the power. These three powers are the strongest, probably. Yeah. For more people, for the most people who are just leading the companies, the societies, mm -hmm. and if people like you are just uh, using these motivations to increase understanding among yes. the people, then it's very good. Then I think, well, I, I, you know, I think what is interesting also in what you say is, uh, and thank you. That's very a very accurate uh, um, descriptions of what. I think I'm trying really to do. Like that. I like to work with what is there. I'm mm -hmm. not judging, and people may be motivated by power. I think that is a reality, and, and I think it's okay because we it, we all have some desire, whether we recognize this or not. So let's use this in a constructive fashion. When you talk That's about ego, we all have an ego. Yes. The yes. good news, however, is that egos can evolve. Um, you know, Carl Jung was talking about the ego meeting the shadow. And then the self can emerge, a more complete mm -hmm. form of ourselves. And I think part of what happens in this work is people, yes, they come with their ego, but as they go through this kind of process, they develop a more healthy ego, if I may say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One that is not just self-centered, but a form of ego that embraces their own complexity and also a form of ego that becomes in the service of others. Um, mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. um, and so you see that I describe in the book, I refer to some work um, uh, done by uh, initially Anna Freud, actually looking at defense mechanism we can use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As we develop as human beings, um, we start to use more mature defense mechanism. And an example of that will be altruism. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mother Teresa, for example, I don't know her personal. Yes. Um, yes. And I, but I suspect she probably said I was helping others not to care for myself, but I was just there for others. A psychoanalyst might, might say, well, probably she had her own motive. Mm -hmm. Whether she recognized that or not is almost irrelevant um, if in the end she's there to help others. Yes, yes, uh, yes. You know? and, um, and if it even makes her happy. And it makes and her happy if she doesn't see that she, w uh, she got something from that. That's okay. Uh, this is know? another moment to recognize the sense, the meaning yeah. of my mission. To yes. yeah, so identify myself with, with, yeah. with that. That's right. And, I mean, I describe other form of defense mechanism that mm -hmm. we can have. But as we uh, grow as human beings, we start to use more mature defense mechanism. Like uh, humor. I, mm -hmm. I, I mean, humor as opposed to mocking people. But we start laughing at ourselves as well. Knocking, not taking ourselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I want to be wise, I cannot take myself too seriously either. I can appreciate, you know, the fragility of yes. my human condition, yes. uh -huh. the fact that we all share some universal challenges. I may be on the top of the world one day a big shot, but I know that tomorrow something else may happen, mm -hmm. and I'm able to laugh at that. I'm a able to laugh at my own mortality, mm -hmm. um, with well, giving up the notion that. I'm going to be immortal. Um, this is another very important moment to uh, let my mortality enter my thinkings, my, yes. my being. Yes. This is another very important point. This is that, so that's part of the, I would call the, psycho the spiritual perspective. Um, for me, also involves looking at some of the existential themes that we all face. And that involves learning from different religions, uh, different philosophers uh, that have given us useful information. So one, one um, psychologist I, I mentioned uh, is Irvin Yalom, for mm -hmm. example, who looks at the existential challenges we face, and that is one of them. And oftentimes he, he noticed, I have the same uh, experience, that people may be in denial of that. Um, mm -hmm. The problem is if we 
are in denial of that reality. Paradoxically, we may not live life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. When we appreciate that our time on earth is limited, then, then we, we can, can give ourselves the permission to make the we most of this time. We can value every, every moment. We, we can, can value, value every, every day. moment. Be more yes. mindful of the way yes. we use time. Which leads me maybe to one remark um, mm -hmm. uh, connected to what you said earlier. Global coaching is, I have to say, challenging. Um, if you thought that, hey, I'm going to learn this very quickly, uh, that's not going to be the case. But it's also very exciting because it's a lifelong journey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oftentimes, what I've noticed today, one of the problems is that people tend to be very specialized in one area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And with global coaching, the invitation is that we learn from multiple disciplines, that we are not just stuck with one discipline, that mm -hmm, we open mm -hmm. up to what we can learn from different disciplines. So global coaching, uh, the ambition is to integrate learning from various disciplines. And, mm -hmm, and my own mm -hmm. journey... I guess I'm doing this also for a selfish reason. I'm also, no. I think like you, a curious person. And I don't want to just be, um, how do I say, in a box, being specialist in that one area. I want to continue to learn. But I think there is a need today, if we want to address the complex challenges that we face, we cannot do that by just looking at reality from one perspective, mm -hmm. one specialist perspective. Mm -hmm. We need to all learn to open ourselves to different cultures, different disciplines, and to call upon the lessons from these disciplines to shed light on some of the challenges that we face today. And so that's the, the journey here. We are never going to know everything, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but what matters is to advance on that journey. You know, sorry. No, 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 uh, that's what I wanted to say. What is very interesting, we started to talk about, well, business coaching, yes. and after a few minutes we are talking about existential questions. It's every time somehow connected. It's all connected and because, yeah, it's all connected. I think, and I, I think you, you said it also very eloquently. We, in, in this coaching, we are very pragmatic. We address concrete. We want to help leaders and teams address very concrete challenges and that they face. It's all right. But the idea is that the coach doesn't come here as the expert saying, you should do this, you should do that, and here's my advice. What we do is really help to unfold the potential mm -hmm. that this leader has, that this person has, to help him develop his own capacity to look at his or her challenges in a different way, to find a different way to communicate with his or her colleagues, to basically deploy the resources that are in that person so mm -hmm. he's better equipped to address the challenges that he or she faced. And the assumption here is that we all have amazing potential but we use typically a small portion of that. And it is mm -hmm. our role as coaches to just help to deploy that. Uh, yeah. We act as facilitators. That is very much needed, I think, in the mm -hmm. world today. Um, that definitely, yes. I 100% agree. And in school, I don't know how it is in the Czech Republic, uh -huh. but in Belgium and in many countries where I've been, we learn a lot of interesting things in, in high school. We learn about physics, yes, we learn about yes. mathematics, we learn about literature. Uh, what we don't learn so much yet is understanding ourselves, mm -hmm. developing healthy relationship with others, uh, uh, inner dialogues, inner dialogue, yes, um, becoming more res taking more responsibility for our lives, uh, understanding mm -hmm. um, what it takes to become more responsible, to build healthy relationship with others, to um, find meaning in our lives. Those topics, how to make the most of diversity. Yes, um, well, we don't learn that well, uh, typically, and that's unfortunate. Uh, so that's I right. think there is a, an opportunity, really, um, to, to learn that at an early stage. And I think when people will do that, um, and there are some examples where this is starting. I had a chance to do this with a school in Japan. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still an exception. I think there are lots of promises that we can help to build a better world. Yeah. I, I'm sure that these topics, subjects, are really missing at schools because so-called primitive tribes, they have it as an oral teaching. The elders are talking to the youngsters and they explain them your position in the world, your responsibility, mm. how to think about yourself. Look at this fighter. He can do it because he has <laughs> good balance with his uh, self-confidence and uh, physical <laughs> abilities, etc., etc. And we are usually missing it in, uh, in Western world or how to say it in the European but I think so. And, and going back to culture, 
that is also missing in um, actually in, in education for leaders, executives, managers, mm -hmm. in many MBA programs still today. Wow. Yes, they have a class on intercultural management, they, mm -hmm. they would compare nationalities, but still uh, many of the leaders today, for example, are clueless about um, how do you ensure when you do a merger, an acquisition, an alliance, how to ensure that this becomes a success. The failure rate is just tremendous. That mm -hmm. is causing human suffering, financial uh, loss. And yet, you know, when people learn how to coach across cultures, they have no uh, means, tools, clues on how to ensure that when two companies come together, they are able to leverage those differences and turn that into a success. Yeah. I mean, uh, but many leaders have not learned that yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, that's this why we have had this seminar grow. here in these three yes. days. And I have to say for many of our participants, including very senior executives, we had some CEOs here, um, it was, I have to say, a, re a revelation for them okay. because they hadn't learned that in school somehow. But I'm definitely sure that in any moment of life, mm. If you are the first man who can stop them and let them to face themselves, and all, yeah. all these moments you mentioned is very important for their personal life as well. Yes. It's not only about just uh, business coaching, it's about just personal handling with life. Yes, exactly. We are, um, we are a whole human being. I don't mm -hmm. think we can be very effective if we, if we just pretend we are going to address the business aspect, mm -hmm. but we won't, don't want to talk about you as a human being. You mm -hmm. know? We are here with our emotions, with our issues, and if coaching, the coaching um, sessions cannot be a place where people can discuss that, then it's not going to be so effective. Which is why, by the way, when I would coach executives, it's fully confidential. Mm -hmm. It's important to have a space where they can be very candid. They know that they have in front of them somebody who is not going to judge them, mm -hmm. who is there as their ally, who has their best interest in mind, and... Um, and they can speak very candidly. Uh, yeah. That actually rarely happens um, that we have that opportunity. Please, uh, can you tell me, Philip, if I have correct information, but now I'm in doubt of that, you started as an engineer in Silicon Valley. Is it right? It is right, yes. Please tell me a few words about your <laughs> journey from Silicon well, Valley, where I would expect some narrow-minded, uh, number-filled well, yeah, yeah. people, <laughs> till well. so wide and... Well, but that, that is, you know, but that exactly the... The issue when I started, if I go back to high school in Belgium, you had to choose between more of a scientific studies mm -hmm. and, and, the more, uh, and more of the humanities. And I didn't like to have to make that choice, to be honest, to be in one box. You were either mm -hmm. studying mathematics and science it's, or either Greek and Latin. Um, yes, yes. Latin I was able to continue to study, but it was one or the other. So um, I studied... I ended up studying the, the engineering, mathematics. I went uh, to a polytechnical school in Belgium, mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. to Stanford University. I studied engineering. But the good thing at Stanford is I was able to take all my electives in the humanities. So uh -huh, even though uh -huh. I, was, I got a master's in electrical engineering, I had a class in philosophy, one in history, one in sociology that accounted wow. for my diploma. Still, you know, I was trained as an engineer, so I worked as an engineer in the Silicon Valley. That was my first job. Came back to Belgium, worked as an engineer and as a manager. But something that struck me is the fact that the human potential is often underutilized. And that's really so unfortunate for people, for organizations, for society in general. So I was wondering, how could we change that possibly, you know, to make a better use of human potential? And that was the beginning of a journey. I went back to business school, learned about strategy, marketing, mm -hmm. even human resources, but not the answer to that question. And that involved some, again, a personal journey. I attended seminars, I, I read a number of books, and I ended up starting to coach. That was in the early 90s, without realizing that what I was doing was actually coaching. Wow. And then I, um, and I wanted to be able to help people um, use more of their potential. And basically, I, I learn from different disciplines. Mm -hmm. I combine different disciplines. But rather than just training people, I was working with them, helping them identify their challenges, their goals, and working with them, helping them to achieve those goals. So, so, so that's, that was the journey so, um, I, I would guess at the beginning. I would guess that even today you are still learning something. Yes, you guessed correctly. Uh, <laughs> because then what I realized was, 
a lot has been already done, part mainly from the US mm -hmm. coaching um, had been created in the US, but what was missing in coaching was this cultural perspective. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was as if and it's that didn't exist. Uh, yeah. So they were not taking culture into consideration. So to give an example, I would see in, because I also did some coaching and training in the US, I would say at the end of a week with senior leaders, they were all dealing with the same issues and they would say, I'm, I want to have more balance in my life. Mm -hmm. But they didn't seem to realize that maybe something in the current culture was driving them to not have that balance. And so that's just an example of um, the, yeah, the fact that culture was not taken into account. So I thought it would be interesting to systematically integrate mm -hmm. culture into coaching. And in order to do that, then I, I studied, I, I read different books from different interculturalists. Yes, and yes. they had done some interesting work as well. But, but again, as I was saying at the beginning of our discussion, they were just comparing countries. I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying a little bit. And so I thought, how can we combine these two disciplines to create something I would call coaching across cultures that would mm -hmm. serve both purposes of um, ensuring that when we coach people, we also help leverage the diversity and for interculturalists to help go beyond just a national view and, and sometimes a static view of culture, to understand that cultural differences exist in different uh, generations, different professions, yes. are all yes. forms of differences and, uh, and to take that into account. And, okay. and as I continued the journey, um, you know, for me it was also about integrating more disciplines, the mm -hmm. physical perspective, mm -hmm. the spiritual perspective, that also wasn't part of coaching typically. So I thought it would be politics, mm -hmm. interesting to include that as well. So we have something that is a more powerful approach than if I'm just looking from a psychological standpoint, and that I'm going to be very helpful if I know much about psychology, but mm -hmm. I'm probably going to miss other important aspects. If somebody is stressed out, for example, yes, I may help the person uh, give himself or herself the permission to mm -hmm. take better of uh, get care of themselves and uh -huh, so on. Uh -huh. But doing some physical exercise could also help. You know? Yes, and, yes, and, yes. Uh, and so that's great. To, that's the idea. You know, wh what I'm now doing, I'm just... Uh, I have my vision that you are talking with uh, political leaders and helping them just to improve on that field. Uh, well, and I am trying to imagine that European leaders can find understanding. <laughs> if they are interested, <laughs> I'm open to work with them. Uh, um, it at would the be moment, great. Uh, at the moment, I have to say I work more with. Um, uh, less with in the political area. I mean, nothing prevents uh, me from doing that. Uh, yes, it's just yes. a question of um, I, I, I work with those who want to um, call upon my service or the service of my colleagues. And at the moment, it, it's mainly, I would say, organizations, not necessarily uh, corporations. I've worked also with non-profit organizations, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, organizations. Less so politicians these days, but mm -hmm. that may change, you know. Yeah. It's very important to do your job uh, on a field of business, definitely yes, because the leaders, the, men, the people who are just pushing the world forward are usually the businessmen. So it's very important to no. still be on that field. But I wish <laughs> that maybe some politicians uh, will Sometimes, ask you. you know, I don't mean, because I have a great deal of respect, by the way, for the complexity of the job, whether that is the job of an executive, the job of a politician, Sometimes I see people being critical, you know, of politicians and, and, and not always realizing, you know, the, the challenges that these people face. However, sometimes, you know, when I see some political debates, I wish they would learn more how to engage uh, with one another in a constructive fashion. I think that might be very helpful. And when you look at um, the world today, we need, whether we like it or not, we are all on the same boat. That, we need it. to collaborate with one to. another. That's right. And, and we might be more effective doing that if we learn how to appreciate and leverage the differences. And, uh, and that is something that, you know, even senior uh, politicians, some of them have not learned to do that. So, yes, I think there may be an opportunity here. But, um, but I have to say, as, the, um, as a coach, I'm very much dependent still on the coachee. He, he, she is the one doing most of the work. I'm only a facilitator. And if somebody is not willing to embark on that journey, that is a demanding journey, mm -hmm. which implies I'm willing to look at myself, to question myself, 
that requires some courage, that requires some humility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some people may say, you know, I know it all already. I'm very successful. I don't want to go there. I don't want to yes, question yes, myself. Yes. If they are not ready to do that, well, I, I cannot do much, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I need to have somebody in front of me who is willing to engage in the journey, who yeah. see a potential benefit for themselves and for their others to do that. At the beginning, I thought that I'm meeting a business coach, and I think that if uh, some Indiano or mm -hmm. any um, remote place living people have been sitting here with us, they would say that you are a shaman. Is this really something like this? Well, I, I think that as a compliment. <laughs> I, 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 I mean it like this. I mean it like that. Yeah. Well, we we can use different uh, words. Uh, I, I'm just trying at at my level to uh, help people um, use more of their potential, mm -hmm. so they can mm -hmm. live a more fulfilling lives, and they can help build a better world. Um, Great. So I try to bring my contribution uh, to help do that. And Great. You can call it however we want, but uh, that's what I try to do. That was a great meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter. And good luck. Thank you. Good luck to you too. Good luck.